I uh, just want to say a couple of things about the meeting we had um, on the 26th and what we agreed at that meeting. As, as everyone knows, it was a meeting which had one of the largest platforms that I've, you know, I mean, 10 or 11 speakers, I think it had on, on the platform. Nevertheless, I think it was an important and substantial meeting brought together, you know, a, a, a broad range of political forces, important political forces, and there were some very serious contributions made at the meeting, I mean, I remember particularly the, the contribution of Paul Matney, the contribution from, from the comrades from, from Greece were extremely important and, and reflected what has become um, something that is, 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 is almost self-evident, that as the crisis now deepens, you're getting uh, these movements developing throughout Europe. I mean, it begins in Greece, but that, that, that have been, as I said at the meeting in the large hall, that have been general strikes now in, in, in Turkey, in Romania. Tomorrow in Spain, there's a, a public sector workers' strike in Portugal. Hungary now, which isn't part of the Eurozone, and less important uh, in, in one sense, is still enormously important because uh, the, the, the Hungarian debts are held by banks within the Eurozone. So, I mean, this is an enormous crisis of, 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 of the system. And, and I, I, I think we have to say that um, David Cameron made quite a remarkable statement today, which, which should give us all pause for thought. He said, what I am about to do to you all will change your lives for decades. <laughs> <laughs> and it will change, change the lives of everyone for decades. Well, maybe, you know, but I, I strongly suspect that David Cameron and the other millionaire members of the cabinet, their lives will not be substantially changed. But for the people in this room, their lives will be substantially changed. And therefore, when we had that meeting, we said that we would have a, an open meeting to discuss how, how we take uh, this campaign forward. So I'm not, in fact, going to say very much because I think having had a meeting where we've had 10 speakers from a platform and no speakers from the floor, we do have to, in a very you know, open and democratic way, open, open this meeting up to, to the people here. I will just say one, uh, at <coughs> just, just very, very briefly two things. This is a period in which there will be very big spontaneous movements and movements that appear and come from nowhere and movements that don't at first sight appear directly connected with the economic crisis. I mean the reason that the meeting to, that we had two weeks ago seems for me so far away is that almost immediately after that meeting, I mean a few days after that meeting, we had the situation with Flotilla and we had in the last uh, in the last week well, less than a week actually, well, I mean, a week ago today, we had uh, an impromptu demonstration in Trafalgar Square, in, in, in Downing Street, where, according to the police figures, 3,000 came, where we had a demonstration that took over Downing Street, marched to the Israeli embassy, and then within a period of three or four days, we had a much, much, much larger demonstration. So that is one aspect of the development of this of, of, of this crisis actually it is not completely unconnected with, the, with because in in Greece and in Turkey where there have been these movements where they've had in May Day in Taxi Square the first march with, with hundreds of thousands they've also had mass demonstrations on the question of Palestine and we also have a situation where on the 20th there will be what will be, in my opinion, you know, 
our cable street, if you, you know, something which we have to take enormously seriously, that the so-called English Defence League, who have been supporting the Zionists, they went to the Israeli embassy and supported the Zionists in large numbers, will be attempting to march through Tower Hamlets, and I'm sure many people here will be wanting to be part of that campaign, and I think we will have an enormous response then. But two days after that, we then have the question of, of, of the budget, and we will see the, 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 cut, the range of draconian cuts that, that, that this new coalition will wish to, to impose upon us. So I, I, I think I'll, you know, that's, that's how I see the situation. I think that we have to find the path to, to beginning a serious campaign against, against these cuts. It has to be a mass campaign. It has to include the forces that were represented at this, this public meeting a couple of weeks ago. I'm pleased to see that um, there are representatives here from a number of different political organisations, but I'm particularly pleased to see that the Green Party is here. Caroline Lucas has been um, uh, very supportive of this campaign. She is an important addition to Parliament. She's uh, agreed to speak at Trafalgar Square should we have um, a, a, a march, a demonstration and a rally to Parliament on the day of the budget, which I think is something that we ought to discuss. I'm very pleased that the comrades from Greece are here. I know that the European Social Forum will be taking place in July. And I also know that a number of European MEPs, socialist MEPs, are calling for European-wide days of action. So from my point of view, the important thing is to internationalise our response, but also to make sure that we actually do have a serious response to the crisis uh, that we're facing. So having, having said that, um, Claire, you know, we, we've got to... We can, do action points or whatever, you know, we're going to do stuff, we're going to put up what people suggest. That's one way of doing it. But I, I think I should just open the floor to, to contributions. And, and, I, and I know Alf wanted to, to start by saying a couple of things. So I think we'll open with Alf. And then if, if comrades could indicate that they want to speak or, you know, you can ask a question. It doesn't have to be a long speech, then please do. One I to talk about was initiatives in Brent and how we're generalising from particular experience, which may or may not reflect or give other comrades some ideas of some additional ways forward. Up until the election in Brent, we've had um, a loose, what's called Brent Red Green Forum, where we tried to set up a network which involved comrades from various left wing organisations, including the Green Party, Socialist Workers, Resistance, and various independents, etc., just to try to bring the left in front together and also discuss the <coughs> election. Anyway, uh, after the election, we had our meeting and we agreed that we would set up an open campaign and organise an open meeting and conference on, um, on some fundamental issues in Brent and then for the meeting to decide which way forward. And as some of you may or may not be aware, um, College of North West London are closing the Kilburn building. Um, we know of various other initiatives and checks on various areas of public spending, cuts, etc. So what we've decided is to organise a broad meeting, public meeting, which is going to involve speakers. We've got two comrades coming from the uh, Fourth International section in Greece as part of the Coalition of Resistance, who, by the way, will be available if anyone wants to use them at other meetings. We have a reason for saying that, to help contribute towards sharing the air there, but that's another matter. But we'll discuss the logistics that we've got a meeting. We're hopefully lining up in Southwark and one or two other areas, but we will inform you as and when. And if people want to involve them in other meetings, then hopefully that'll be the case. We're going to have speakers from Right to Work, we're going to have speakers from this campaign, we've got various speakers from various voluntary sectors, local trade unions, and so others. So we've tried to organise a very wide initiative um, because, quite frankly, there's so many fronts that the cuts are going to be happening on, and 
obviously, while there's the organised labour movement we need to get involved, there's the organised trade unions we need to reach out to. There's also the voluntary services, there's the users as well as the staff. And we want to make sure the Tories aren't able to bring about that divide, but they will. We can see already on education, look parents, if you want a decent education in your kids, we can give you free school. But we can divide you off from the teachers in the, yeah, through the academy. So we know what's going to happen in various areas of the public sector. Um, and we know that, yeah, what the Tories are going to plan. Um, however, in Brent and in Harrow and elsewhere in London, we also have elected Labour councils. Now, some of these councils are going to be in a real quandary, and some hopefully we're going to appeal to them um, to say, look, if you're prepared to fight with us, you'll have one, our 100% support. And we don't know, we know that some councils will have a good track record, some may not, but as the situation politically develops, as the situation in the Labour Party also develops, there's going to be lots of different avenues of developments, initiatives, etc. So um, we're trying to emphasise the need to keep it open, support all initiatives, both the right to work, the, and whatever campaign emerges out of here, residents, tenants association initiatives, and try to bring unity. The other thing I would say is the trouble with any cuts campaigns in the past is you take people up the hill. Um, and you need to make sure you don't have to march them down again. I mean, what we should also be doing is arguing um, what alternatives. I mean, for instance, um, we've got the, we're being told we have to accept the cuts. Well, we should be saying we have to accept a wealth tax on the rich. We have to accept nationalisation. We have to accept opening the books. We have to accept that we are not, as working class communities, prepared to accept the price for the capitalist crisis. And we have an advantage. We are in a position where we can help in the internationalise the struggle, draw on the lessons and draw the things. So I think those are various issues. Um, obviously, there are different sectors of society where the cuts go a bit even more in the ethnic communities amongst women in the states and this and the other. There's going to be a whole load of autonomous groups and organisation activities. But if we can somehow, without taking them over, but recognising their autonomy, strengthen the movement against the cuts, then I think that will help. Um, a big snowball of, and I prefer the slogan, Coalition of Resistance, because I think it really sums up what we're trying to build. But it's not just resisting, we've got to also say we've got to put forward an alternative. And we need to enable people across the communities to work out what their answers are, what their solutions are, what their needs are, and what they feel they want. And we have to help give people strength to be able to go out onto the streets in the communities and the states to campaign around that. So that's just some ideas. Hopefully also you'll come, it's the Lyric Constantine Centre, which is near um, Dolly Tube Station, um, June the 17th at 7.30, as people tend to get late, put down 7 o'clock, so you're there for 7.30. <laughs> all right. Um, we're allowed for break time. And hope to see you all there. And I've, I've sent details, so I hope we've gone and counted far enough the websites as soon as possible. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, how are you now to see your red green morale? Uh, what brings us up here tonight is, as I think the first two speakers outlined, the, the need to do something about the scale of the cuts that we face. I mean, what I think for, for many people, they're just start, starting to realise the kind of scale of things that are being proposed. And the argument, I think, is about are we going to end up moving the direction of Greece and potentially Spain, or could it be Ireland, or even worse? Right? And these are the kind of issues that we are trying to grapple with. And I think there's a couple of problems that we have in Britain. The obvious problem is division. <coughs> Boss is trying to divide public sector from private sector, win the public sector, back office versus front line. All these kind of tactics are being used to try and split the opposition. And we have another problem in Britain, and that's the state of the British left. Because you end up with the British left, it's far too small, and it's also far too fragmented. And it's a historical problem that's existed for time immemorial. And I think what we have to work out is how we overcome those problems, the division in the movement, and division in the left. And we have all these different organisations, we have to work out how we bring our forces together so that the the hard left, the revolution of the left, whatever you want to call it, can you know, strike together with maximum impact. And so what 
what I want to know is, I mean, at this point in time, you have the National Shop Shoes Network. I happen to be the joint national <coughs> organiser for that. We've got Right to Work. I'm on the steering committee for that. We've got a proposal here. There's another organisation, Can't Pay, Won't Pay. We've got the Labour Representation Committee. They had a conference a few weeks ago. And those two organisations are working for Right to Work in an attempt to bring the resistance together. And my concern is that I, I can't see how we can justify yet another organisation when what we're doing is spending all our time bringing the three existing organisations together. And so I'd like to hear from the colleagues here why it is we need a, a, another centre organisation, what makes it so distinctive and so necessary, and how is it going to overcome the difficulty that we face? Okay, thanks very much. Um, I mean, as I see it, we face a situation here where I think we're all clear about these scams up for coming. But of course, we also have to put this into a political context. I think the points that Andrew started with about the uh, crisis of imperialism, which in my mind is intimately connected with the, uh, uh, with the economic crisis, the fact that we have a rise of Islamophobia and we have the demonstration against the EDL on the, uh, on the 20th of uh, June, these things are all linked, that you have to actually look at them um, in that kind of way. And those of us, some of us who created this, uh, this meeting last time were people who were involved in the Stop the War Coalition and still are involved in the uh, in the Stockholm coalition, and uh, it seems to me that we have to look at it in this kind of way. Now, I personally don't see any of these things as competition. I think that the more the merrier in terms of what people do. But if anybody, I mean, Ray has just said he's already on two steering committees or three steering committees. I don't remember how many it was exactly. This is a fact of life. It's a fact of life in terms of politics, and not just in Britain, to be perfectly frank. There are always all these different types of organisations. The key thing is, can we organise together on the 20th, like we did last Saturday, can we organise on the 20th to make sure that we have a successful demonstration in London, with obviously with the local organisation there, with Unite Against Fascism and all these different things. Can we organise on the 21st and the 22nd together in order that we, uh, that we have the maximum impact on the day? And that's the point of this meeting. And it seems to me the point of the meeting that we had was to have a big and I think very, very successful meeting in solidarity with the Greek workers, which isn't just about Greece. I mean, obviously, Greece is the cutting edge of it at the moment. We all know this is in Spain, in Hungary, and in um, coming to Britain at any time quite soon. So it's a question of how we really dig these things up. And I think it shouldn't be for us to have to say, in what is actually quite a big organising meeting, why do we think we should have a uh, campaign, which is in solidarity with Greece, which has the slogan, can't pay, won't pay, which I think is a fantastically important slogan, and certainly for the people of my generation, resonates very much with what happened in places like Italy in the 1970s, it was a very important campaign at that time. It seems to me these are the competition. As far as I'm concerned, I see there's a demonstration uh, called by the right to work. I, as far as I'm concerned, whatever we do on the 22nd should link up with that demonstration, should be part of that demonstration, as well as part of everything else. So I don't think, personally speaking, there's a big deal. What I think is important, I think the left has failed to really come to terms with the impact of the recession. I think we did it very successfully around the war. We haven't done the same thing with the recession. And this is catch-up time. We know what is happening with the government. We know that um, Nick Clegg has a very different spin on what the, the cuts are going to be very kind and sort of use a friendly cut from <laughs> Nick Clegg. We know the reality is, as Andrew said, about what David Cameron is going to do, which is that they are going to be some of the nastiest cuts that anyone will be some of the nastiest cuts that any of us have ever seen and will take people back to the 1930s rather than to anything that we've had during the period of the World First State. Therefore, it seems to me we shouldn't be divided here. We should be campaigning about what we think we can do on, on, over the next couple of weeks in order to bring, uh, bring this to people's attention. Personally, I think it would be quite hard in lots of ways to get a very big protest on that day, simply because I think the level of campaigning around the cuts and the level of class struggle is still much lower than the general consciousness inside large sections of the working class movement. That is a job we should really be devoting ourselves to tonight. I think it is important 
for us to, to go, there's the scale and the crisis now, and all, all the way it, way it approaches both, both in the cuts, right, and stuff, but also in the growth of the far right and the rest of it, right, stuff. Really, how we organise is an absolutely central question. And I do want to put, 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 put uh, what I do want to ask a couple of questions to really, because, you see, Ryan's work's probably been going now for about a year. There are three national unions affiliated to it, of something like half a million members of Ryan's right, stuff. There are 80 to 90 trade union organisations affiliated to it, of Ryan's right, stuff. Then it's had a national conference with 900 activists, 700 the other week in London, it's an emergency conference of Ryan's stuff. You know what I mean? And then, then he's right, Ryan's stuff, let the flowers, the flowers and flowers bloom the situation, and everybody should put their ideas across and the rest of it, Ryan's stuff. But also, we have to think about what Ryan's what, what, what right work has been able to do pulled together by people from the Labour Party, people from the Greens, from the pensioners movement, students, the unemployed, and all that stuff has been actually pulled together very successful workshops within both events and stuff by, by migrant workers, <coughs> and all that stuff, the anti fascist movement and the anti war movement. He's, he's, he's carried out two and now four or five meetings that have already happened around the country with green workers and we've been brought over uh, after the first of the general strikes. He's repeating this process and he's carrying out seminars around the country and around the trade union laws and the rest of it. Now, anybody who knows how things work in the union movement, know the trade union movement, knows it's a funny place of right stuff. And winning unions to commit themselves and organisations to commit themselves, where right stuff to back, to, to back initiatives, to back national campaigns and the rest of it, is a, is, is a process that you have to fight for. I think at the minute, right stuff, lots of the groundwork that Conway T have been talking about, quite frankly, has been done by right stuff about it. It is a question if I agree with that, stuff, do we want to decide that what we're going to do is reinvent the wheel? Tony Bennett all makes the same joke by right stuff. He says there are too, too many socialist organisations and not enough socialists. But right stuff, at the minute, what we're about to do is go through the People's Charter, the National Shop Stewards Network, the Right to Work campaign, and tonight we'll invent another one. Personally, but by stuff, I think that anybody who right to work as a National Steering Committee, which is open, but by stuff, under that base, it seems to me that people should be getting involved in right to work. Living in other people who were at the National Conference, but by stuff, you know, that, that, we, that, we, that we held a, 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 a couple of days ago, really, and stuff. And just the final thing, really, is that it is because what's about to happen to our class, right stuff, is absolutely fundamental. They are going to assault everything, by right stuff, that we have fought for over the last half century. That's what they're going to do, and they're going to try and divide us within that. And the left has to be a bit savvy about these things. But right, so the main point of all of us, you know, being naive about things and the rest of it, right, so we know we've got choices. Either various organisations, whatever, right, so set up their own campaigns and stick through these, whatever, right, so, or what we start doing is coming together. And right, so there's an open structure, you know, it's conference the other day, it was addressed by John McDonnell, by, by, by Jeremy Corbyn, whatever, right, so it exists. It has backing, it has support inside it, like elements of the movement, where right stuff you use, like EEJ, work very closely with like the UCU, where right stuff and, 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 and other unions, where right stuff. But this isn't a, a point scoring exercise at all. The main thing here is what we do on the 22nd, and we have to get mobilisation. So I agree completely personally, right stuff. I think you know, that actually this could be our chance to break the deal by then being decided to go to the East End, where right stuff. But how you organise does matter. How you organise is important. Advice up and creating more division inside the movement, advice up to me, is a fundamental mistake. We have to be coming together at the minute, where advice up, not creating another strand, where advice up on a day we should be working together on it, right? And that's why it's an important question to sweep it under. You can say that, and it sounds fine, where advice up, but we've got something that's been worked on for a year, that has a broad structure, that has a broad political outlook, that puts the economic questions and all sides of wider, wider, wider social questions of racism, that is done by and, 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 and other issues and stuff. That exists, and people should get in behind it, really, and stuff, and get it wrong. Okay, well. yeah, I'm uh, glad to renew the discussion with the comrades from the We had it a while ago in a different forum, but uh, it's good to be back with some wicked comrades. Um, let me put it this way. Um, the way in which you construct unity is practical. And I suggest this is the way that we do it on the 22nd. Um, as we invited Michael to speak on the platform here, um, we will invite, and I hope maybe the, the reps of um, the uh, Right to Work campaign will be, will be represented by the speaker you send. It's an invitation to speak at the rally that we're going to hold, I hope, of Trafalgar Square on the, on the 22nd. And of course, any demonstration um, that we hold will meet up with the Right to Work protest. And I think that the way in which you find out how it's possible to cooperate together on the left isn't by debating in rooms like this, and I'm sorry that it's turned into that, it's by practical cooperation. That's how, how it works. If you can turn up with people and seriously mobilise people and bring along people from the wider labour movement and we can together make a serious demonstration which has an effect in terms of getting publicity for the cause, in terms of an impact on the government, then that's the way in which unity is created. There's an old slogan about this, which is March separately, but strike together. <laughs>
And I hope on the 22nd, even if we do end up having the different rallies, that we unite those two rallies, that we bring all the people that we both represent together, and that we strike together against the government, against the cuts, and show that the left, even though it might have different attitudes to how you build against the recession, can, when it comes to crucial demonstrations like that, unite in one place at one time. And it seems to me that that is the most practical and sensible suggestion about the way in which we are going to unite all the people we represent in this room in one place and one time. Now, maybe further down the road, if Michael's opened up the right to work committee and there are invitations to other groups to join up into it. I mean, Stop the War was supposed to be represented, but we've never actually had uh, an invitation from, uh, to Stop the War, never mind about uh, to campaign, won't pay. Then, of course, there might be organisational uh, unity that could come out of this. But for the moment, the best thing is that we all unite together on one day, in one place, even if we come from different perspectives, even if we have different views about how it's best to proceed. If Christos wants to give us a brief synopsis of the Greek left, we might find that the British left is not so bad. <laughs> For nine years, so I could speak, could have my opinion about this country. I want, uh, I wanted to, to bring some of, of our experiences in Greece, and uh, I'll do that uh, not because uh, you know uh, you should copy them or anything like that. The context is completely different, but because they're already already on the table, you know, from what I've heard uh, so far. Okay. Uh, this one reason. The second reason uh, that uh, I'm going to do this is uh, the feedback I got after the last uh, meeting we had on the 26th of May. I think what uh, both the people that spoke on the panel and the audience liked, it, is, it was this diversity of political opinions and at the same time the unity of all these people. They sat together and they found the common, you know, they, they tried, you know, one to kind of uh, complement the other, or the struggle of uh, the other people. And I think we can, we can start from, from there. This is something that we got so far, and we can build on this. Uh, on the 1st of May in 2009, not the last 1st of May day in Greece, the previous one, uh, there were five different marches in Greece, in Athens. It wasn't one. OK, we had five. This year, there were two. And so it was the Communist Party, okay, that keeps, you know, itself kind of uh, uh, isolated and all the other people together. And uh, on the 5th of May, it was one big demonstration that you know it was more than 200, 250,000 people. Uh, what you actually, the call it was for two, for two different uh, uh, protest gatherings, okay, in two different squares in Central Athens. But the people, they were so huge, the masses, you know, the took on the street, there were so many that they united the whole thing. What I want to say is that in situations like that, you cannot predict sometimes what is going to happen. And the best way in order to accommodate the anger of the people, because anger it will exist. You know, we will have to face the problems that the, the people's anger will. Uh, so, how to, what to do? How to politicize? How to give aim to the, uh, how to provide a name? How to provide an alternative to these people, uh, this uh, people discontent? Uh, it is to start getting ready from that moment and also prepare this moment uh, to happen. And then you have many different levels. Okay, one of the problems that we have, we have in Greece at that moment it is that there are so many different strikes and so many different struggles. It's not, uni it's not a united front. And you have, you have completely, you have some right-wing people that uh, they, they occupy their town halls because they, uh, because they want to uh, uh, preserve the, their interest, uh, because it's a kind of sort of devolution of the Greek uh, state is going on at the same time as the IMF, and this organic part of the neoliberal restructuring of, uh, of Greece. Okay, and you have so and also you have racist attacks going on, although much less than previous than in the summer, because now the, you know everybody's anger is direct towards IMF and uh, the EU, but still they are there. Uh, so all these things, all these different struggles at the same time, they work in, in a kind of in a, in a level that uh, emotionally also kind of uh, uh, let's say subconsciously you know reflect. 
the level, you know, of, of, the, of, the, of the people, of the ordinary people, but at the same time, you know, you have to, it, they, they just overlap. You have the same people take part in one strike, but then the other strike. And this goes beyond trade unions. Part of the, for example, one of the big, uh, big, um, uh, big uh, uh, change that it ha it has happened in the last two years, especially after the December revolt in Greece, and uh, it is more obvious the last uh, six, the last uh, the last months after January. It is that it is that the, the official trade unions they cannot play the role that they should play at this moment. Okay, uh, and we have the grassroots uh, trade unions that they, they are the emerging force out of, you know, and they leave this, uh, this struggle. And at the same time, we have examples and we have set up as the radical left and also parts of the far, of the ultra left, uh, to set up uh, uh, neighborhood, neighborhood uh, committees as the one in the brand. You start very, it's very difficult to get people there. You may get a lot of, you know, uh, well done and a lot of, uh, you know, applauses and stuff like that, but it's not easy to get people down on the streets. But then you have this big thing, you know, that happens and you don't know where it came from. Okay, but, oh, but you, you were working for it. So, what I want to say is, we enter in situations, just to conclude, that they're not normal. We may need to work in many levels, we may need to contradict sometimes with ourselves, we may need to uh, be able to adapt and more of, most of all just to work with the people, okay, and, uh, and to listen to the people. A coalition of resistance, which actually was the, co the organising slogan of the last Right to Work conference, for very good reasons. Because I think people are right about the need to be political and not just economical, not just trade unionists in a narrow sense about what we do to fight against the crisis and to protect people from the crisis. And that's why I want to kind of say two things really something about the Right to Work organisation and the question of unity, and then something about UAF and what's happening on the 20th, because I was also one of the organisers of beating the BFP embarking where we wiped out every single Nazi councillor in the last election. <laughs> what was brilliant, I thought, about both Right to Work conferences was the scale of political discussion around the past. So we had workshops at both on the question of migrant workers and the question of racism. If you look at Greece, the mass scale of protests there has for the first time brought migrant workers out of the trade unions onto the street with banners openly. And there is a real problem, I think, about racism in parts of the Greek trade union movement and working class movement, the same as there is here. It's not something that can be denied. So I think it's very important that that's happened. And we, we managed to have 14 or 15 actual local organisations, things like the Refugee and Migrants Forum from East London, a similar forum from Birmingham, from all over the country speaking at that workshop. And I want to just make one point about a thousand flowers blooming. I think people are right. We have to have a thousand flowers blooming. On the 22nd, the Right to Work um, Coalition is not only organising the demonstration that's already organised for Downing Street, for the heart of the beast in the afternoon at 2 o'clock, but everywhere locally, protests and movements that people can be involved in in the evening. It's going to be a long evening, it's going to be a bright evening. We need to be out in every locality building those practical coalitions of resistance on the ground. But I think there's a big difference when we talk about unity and divisions and the difference between, yes, let's all get up organised around the ways we want to organise. The difference is that in places like Seattle, a massive number of local coalitions that were actually built around real organisational points from the ground up, because they were not the variety of the left organisations. That isn't what's organised Greece, that isn't what organises anywhere actually. At, at the right to work on what made it so big and very unusual in Britain in terms of the scale and ethnic diversity of that was the, the local groups and the fact that it was representatives from real organisations. It wasn't people in areas declaring themselves to be one. And I think we have a problem with the fact that um, the right to work and the national shop students are now another organisation um, form that we don't come together. It's a constant argument we're having around this, with, with people coming from all the different affiliated organisations, like Stop the War works actually, like UAF works. And I think people rightly, when Stop the War was set up, Lindsay was one of the key people who argued against a thousand different um, organisations, you know, all organising separately around the question of war because they were different, or well, they had a different point, or they thought they were more political, they thought this, that, and the other, the other groups we should come together. And maybe the starting point for that is to make sure that on the 22nd, everybody is both involved in local actions, but is at that protest 
I think my last point is this, it's on the question, I'm very worried actually, I have to be honest, to hear the way that people are discussing the question of the EDL on the 20th of June. They can only be beaten. We've been, I've been on those big demonstrations and stood in the front line of them and helped to organise resistance against the police at Bolton and so on, but we can only really beat the EDL by mass protests on the ground that are built from the local communities upwards. They shall not pass was a slogan in East London in 1936. It was not outsiders that built it. It has to be built locally and it has to be organised by UAF and so on. You can't be separate groups of people. Yes, yes, you yeah, march separately and so on, but you'd be much better off taking the UAF leaflets, getting into your local areas, your local tube stations, and building that organisation. And anyone who's in East London should be at the organising meetings and at the rally on the 15th, because unless we build it that way, the EDL will type. I don't think they only build around Islamophobia. Actually. The campaign in East London of the fascists was an old fashioned, vicious, racist campaign built on immigration and immigration controls. It isn't only about Islamophobia, although they'll be so good on the 20th. So you've got to organise really in your community. It's got to come from your workplace, it's got to come from the community group that you belong to, it's got to come from real organisations and not just collections of lefties constantly dividing ourselves, constantly calling ourselves and finding the to just re Thanks, So the biggest challenge that is facing everybody at the moment is obviously the recession, the crisis, the attacks that are going to be um, coming from the Tory government. In the same way that the war was the biggest challenge um, that we faced, you know, in 2001, the uh, attacks, um, the imminent attacks on Afghanistan and Iraq, and I think, you know, in the same way that it would be wrong to say, well, we get CND can't exist at the same time as we have stopped the war, and, you know, we shouldn't have, you know, Muslim groups campaigning against the war as Muslims. I, I think that would be a wrong decision um, and a wrong call. I, I think it would be wrong to say, like, there's only going to be one organisation that's going to uh, represent the resistance to the recession. I think this recession, because of the multifaceted way in which we're going to get attacked, there are going to be groups that rise up and are going to take us by surprise as well. Um, and I think we should be kind of excited by that and, and be looking out for those and, and want to engage with them and want to work with them. I, I don't think it's necessarily going to be one organisation that represents uh, the totality of the resistance. Um, but I, I absolutely agree with, with the sentiments that we made about we need to have unity in action, particularly um, on the 22nd. And I think you know, what was really good about the meeting that we had um, a few weeks ago was the way they really attracted a new audience and looking around like I didn't really recognise anybody there. It, was, it seemed very impressive, it was quite broad. Um, and I think what was sort of different about um, Carpe Workplay was really the way that it had um, leading figures from Stop the War on the platform as well as Claire Solomon, um, you know, who's obviously president-elect of UDU. And I thought that was very, very important to sort of engage those forces in any kind of um, coalition that we're going to be forming um, that will oppose the recession. Um, and I think you know there was really important to have right to work at that meeting. But I think that's that's the way we're going to have to carry on working. I don't I don't see any problem with that. Um, and I think you know definitely if we've got demonstrations at the same time, it's in the same area. We need to be coordinating, talking to each other, speaking on each other's platforms. Um, anyway, let's move on to something a little bit more practical, really. Um, I want to suggest that maybe we have sort of a carpet monthly tour. Um, and that this goes around, um, maybe we have like a college tour, um, we have tours of like local towns, we invite local greens, people in right to work, we have unionists, students, migrant workers, and um, you know, really try and get sort of inspiring coalitions of resistance organised on the ground. So if we, can, if we can actually have some concrete practical proposals as well as having, you know, the, 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 the same points. Let's, let's take Fred's because I'm sure Fred is a practical. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fred's a place to use and uh, socialism and resistance as well. I mean, you know, there's a very good question here about, you know, how do we overcome the fragmentation of the left? Why another national coalition or local coalition? And maybe that's something... We should discuss as well, and you know, I think we should just accept that we are here now, and we've got to 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 work forward. And I think you know, we, we need to be a bit modest about uh, the relative weight of the left in Britain and the relative weight of each other's organisation, and we shouldn't underestimate the tasks ahead uh, that we have to do. So for the twenty second, I think, frankly, you know, we should see: is it possible here in this room to have a joint platform, a joint rally? You know, is it a big problem? I mean, I'm not bothered about what. You know, title or umbrella organisation as it is, you know, 
Do we have to have two or three separate, uh, 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 two or three separate different meeting points to get under Parliament Square? Can't we just share the platform mm. at uh, at Trafalgar Square? And you know, uh, I'm glad that Raymond's here because he can go, to, go and speak to two political organisations. <laughs> the Socialist Party <laughs> will be even uh, more open than the uh, SNP about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's do it. You know, I mean, it's not a big deal. You know, we can share the speakers. We can invite those of the uh, community and and and, and trade union organisations there and so on. As far as this campaign, if there is going to be a more of a permanent structure and so on and so forth, then we need to, to understand how it's worked, how, you know, how, how people can be comfortable in it and how people will be taken seriously from whatever their, their political traditions uh, and, uh, and see how, how we can work together in that. But you know, again, I think we shouldn't underestimate the, uh, you know, the task ahead in terms of, of organising uh, in the unions in the community. I mean, the Whittington campaign was a brilliant campaign for, I think, a particularly... Uh, fortunate set of local circumstances. Politically, there's been a bit of tradition, the local newspapers were behind it, the local yeah, MPs were behind it. You know, it made it one of the biggest demonstrations ever. But, you know, the Unison Regional Offices were not on the demonstration. Uh, uh, there was a big rally organised by Keep Our NFS Public at the BMA. Uh, regional Offices of Unison in Health denounced the BMA, the British Medical Association, as being the British Martyrs Association because the BMA would <laughs> do more to defend the health service than Unison Health, right? So this is, you know, this is a big problem in order to have a mass demonstration, something which would make an impact. That's why I think it's important to, you know, to go back to say, look, you know, what's the problem about having a joint platform at Trafalgar Square, marching down to the Downing Street, to get uh, you know, to Parliament and see what we do on, on from that. And, you know, and uh, there is going to be off the middle campaigns. You know, we can't, you know, I mean, the Save Whittington campaign was successful also because it was not called the Right to Work campaign, but the Save Whittington Hospital campaign, just like it won't be successful, it was called the, you know, Can't Pay Work campaign. There'll be one on, you know, No to Academy or Defend This Physical Health Centre or whatever, right? And that's what we've got to do. That's how we've got to work together. Yeah, no, I do agree with a lot of that, and I, I, mean, I also just wanted to contribute on this question of whether we should be talking about organisation uh, or activity, and Ray at the outset said that a problem on the left is that we are divided, and what I have a sense we've had this evening is almost a caricature of that cameo in the life of Brian, where they're sitting in the amphitheatre and denouncing the other tiny, tiny sect, and it culminates in a fight in the... Um, underground system and the struggle against Roman imperialism grows, goes by the board. I mean, it's all to do with an organisational fetishism. For goodness sake, we should not be talking about organisation this evening. We shouldn't be trying to privilege one, one organisation over another. We should actually be talking about maximising the amount of activity that we can achieve. And immediately, that means everybody building the 27th as a first focus for getting launched an effective campaign against the cuts in Britain. And I think it is worth us reminding ourselves why that matters. Why we shouldn't be having a squabble on the left about whose organisation we're going to support, but instead should be having a discussion about how we collectively build the level of activity. It is because what we face is something on the scale of the 1930s. It's worth repeating it because of the trivial direction in which the argument has gone. Craig and Cameron have announced a full-scale class war against our side and camps which will make even the cuts of the 70s and the 80s pale into relative insignificance. Cuts on the scale of the 1930s which drove Britain and the rest of the world economy into a depression in order to make our class pay the price to bail out yet again, their system. That's what they're threatening us with, and they are very arrogant about it, very confident about it. The announcement from Cameron that uh, you're going, I mean, Andrew started with it, I mean, the, the, you're all, your lives are all going to be transformed, he's telling us. That's how confident they are about finding these cuts through. But it's not just that, Duncan Smith, Duncan Smith talking openly about how part of it is going to be big cuts in welfare payments. The poor are going to be paid, forced to pay a much, much higher price. That's part of the package too. Gove, talking about dismantling, in effect, the state education system by giving governing bodies of schools the opportunity to turn any school they choose into something independent of, of, of local authority control and democratic control uh, from the local community. There's a whole right-wing programme 
of cuts and changes at the expense of our class, and it is true that we are relatively weak, that we've had historically a very low level of strikes for 20 years, the left is relatively weak, the left is divided, and that space they can fill by giving ordinary working people the sense there is no alternative. That is the gap we have to fill by beginning to demonstrate that there is an alternative. And we will not do that by having arguments about which organisation we belong to. We will only do that by building mass activity. And what we need to do this evening, for the rest of the evening, is actually talk about how we're going to build the 22nd. Thank you. I have to say that Michael Bradley from the Right to Work has put a proposal to, to me and presumably to the meeting that that some people from Can't Pay, Won't Pay meet with the Right to Work campaign and, 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 and you know, see, see if we can have proper discussion about the 22nd. And I think that would be, you know... Why, yeah. why, yeah. Is it, why can't we just come to a decision and say that we share a platform? But it seems like we've got so many egos in this room right now. And it's just, this is what puts people like young people on the left. It's just so, there's so many, like, hurt egos right now. And it's like, just make a decision. Well, that, that was... We, 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 can't, we, we can't take a vote in a meeting for the decision of another organisation, unfortunately. So, but I would, I would, but I, I, Fran, Fran, I agree with you, and I agree with Lindsay, we'll move on to practical stuff now, but what I'm suggesting is that rather than us repeat what the comrades have said, which I, I think is interesting, I think it's an important discussion. It has its, it has roots. This discussion, which I don't, you know, which, which 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 we can explore if we want, but we shouldn't explore them now. We should move on to concrete action. And I'm just suggesting to the meeting that we take up Comrade Bradley's offer for for a, for a discussion, you know, a fraternal discussion to see what practical steps we take on the 22nd. Is that agreed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let's move on to Chris Nynan, who's indicating practical proposals. Yeah. I mean, I think the real job that we've got is to, um, is to assimilate in a way, although not maybe the same scale, similar in a way to what Chris does, so great. We have to make, uh, we have to create a movement that goes way beyond the left in the next few weeks and months. We have to create a movement that has real appeal to the mass of, uh, of British society. And I think that's how we should frame those sessions about the 22nd. And I'm, I, I want to make a, a couple of practical suggestions about it. I think the idea, I mean, one of the, one of the ways I think you do that is first of all by being bold. I think that's been a lesson from the last 10 years of the movement, actually. Take bold initiatives and people will take you seriously. And I think therefore the idea of saying, despite the fact that it's a weekday, and you know, it's a bit unusual, and the GLA may not like it, and blah, 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 we should say, we want to be a rally in Trafalgar Square. It won't be on the scale of the big stop war demonstrations, but it's sending a message out that we're serious. That, secondly, we try and link the political and the economic questions, because I, I, I do think it's, it's noticeable how you can get 20,000 people on demo about Palestine, you can get loads of people demonstrating town hands, I'm sure we will on the 20th, of June over fascism. We haven't yet cracked the economic questions and we need to sort of fuse the two. So I suggest as well that on that rally we have speakers um, about the fascists, we have speakers about Palestine, we have speakers about Afghanistan, as well as, the, you know, and the other rich had a philosophy part of the Middlesex University. So we try and bring all these things together because I think bringing, joining the dots at the moment is very, um, is very popular and, and actually that is what draws people together. Um, I think in terms of the organisation question, we've gone through it, but I mean the important thing is that we all respect each other's ability to mobilise. You know, and that we, we understand if we work together, we'll complement each other. I mean the meeting on, you know, the fact that that meeting happened is about Greece and the solidarity. Actually, a whole lot of new people got brought into the movement. That's got to be a good thing for everyone. And I think that's the, you know, in terms of the organisation question, that's the spirit in which we need to, uh, uh, we need to continue. I think as well we should say that we are going to march down from Trafalgar Square to Parliament Square. That obviously, and we should negotiate the right to work, but I think we should at some stage, whether it's 
have a joint rally at Trafalgar Square and do the whole thing together, or we meet up to Downing Street and go down together from Downing Street to, to Parliament Square. I don't care, but let's just make sure that our actions complement each other and that when people look at it, they think, well, it's unity and diversity. That's what people want. They want to see all the different streams of resistance flowing together, end up in Parliament Square, and that's a message that can actually be seen and understood by large numbers of people. And hopefully that will begin the process of kicking off a new movement. I live a long way from central London, well, actually, I've got a practical suggestion to make. The Vistion dispute in Basildon last year, everybody knows about that. Three weeks later, I went to an electronics component factory that was shut down at similar no notice. Lots of low wage migrants. <coughs> I started talking to them about Vistion. Vistion? What's Vistion? 15 miles away. Within 10 miles of where I live, there are about 10 industrial estates. I think that they are almost completely unorganised for the most part. I think one of the things you should do, we should do, is to have centrally generated the second side of a leaflet that is about the perspective generally, the issues generally. So we can just give it out at entrances to factories on a bit updated regularly so that people know that there are ideas around that challenge the system. The local units of branch where I live, of which I used to be a, an active member, will not take leaflets for the general secretaryship of units. When they say, we'll support you organising UAF leafleting before the general election, they can't get any of their members out. They delegate two full-time officials to go out. That is, a, we're much weaker than we were 20 or 30 years ago. We don't reach nearly far enough. I agree that we should be very unsectarian, but I think we should also talk to people who have no class message reaching them, no class organisation reaching them. Not to do that is to doom ourselves to a very polite conversation amongst ourselves, but not to begin to transform the class. So, how to reach people who have not been reached for a generation? A practical suggestion. Just, just on the 22nd, and obviously it's great, people are going to be there in the afternoon, but I think in, in terms of putting on this thing about being bold, I do think it's important as well, we put a call out for people to come down after work, for people who are working on the 22nd, like the budget might have already been announced, the annual will be building, you know, after work, 5.30, people should come down from across London, we should gather out there, you know, I, I, Obviously, we, we need to do local stuff as well, but on that day, you know, like, since I work in Lambeth, I would much rather try and take people from work down to Parliament on that day. Rather, it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem right almost to be outside Lambeth Town Hall, because on that day, Lambeth Council had the enemy there, and then it's, it's Cameron and it's Clay, and it's, I think we could make a real impact as well. We could reinforce the numbers of students and other people who are there in a day. I think we could really be reinforced if we get big delegations of people coming down Parliament Square after work because I think there's an importance for us in London. We have a we have a national process. We need people in every town and city across the country on that day. And lots of them their local process as well. We need to see them. They need to come on. They need to put the News 24 on and see that there are two, three, whatever thousand people in London outside Parliament the day the budget was announced. So I think it's really important we put the call out for a, for a second. People should be there at two o'clock. Another way that people should come after work with union banners if they can and such like. So that's that's one. Okay. Well, I just find, I just want to say as well. I think you know we can talk about names, whatever names of things should happen under, but we've got to get to a position there where, where we can have a rally with people like me, I and mean, national figures are very important, it's a, it's a our dialectic if you like, you know, the national figures and the local campaigns, we have to get people like Caroline Lucas and Tony Benn onto platforms with local trade unionists, with people in struggle, with local celebrities, etc. I don't know, with Lambeth, you have Linton Quasi Johnson or something, but we have to get those meetings, those big public rallies going up and down hundreds of people in the Manchesters, the Leeds, the Lamberts, the Hatneys, etc. We need to be in a position where we get those big public rallies up and running across Britain. Okay, thank you.
to the left. Um, in terms of uh, practical ideas, I've got some ideas about messaging. Um, one, is that one of the big differences between the situation we're facing in the UK compared to, say, Greece is the fact that most of our debt is owned by domestic pension companies. And I think that that needs to be a message which we're getting out all over the place. We're not in the same sort of position. We're not beholden to people from outside. And if you can start building this thing of, it's actually older people in this country who are going to be suffering from cuts in order to pay back their own pension companies and them saying, we don't want you to do that. Um, another possible message is, I heard someone on Radio 4 the other day explicitly comparing the free schools to the selling off the housing stock in the 1980s Absolutely. without any kind of, of value judgment on that whatsoever. That, I think, is a really strong comparison to put out there in, obviously, a mass, as, a, as having massive negative uh, impacts on the next generation. Um, uh, one possible message as well is the thing of saying, we think that these cuts will push us into recession. We think that they will push us into double bid. And trying to put, build, you're then building something. If the cuts do go through, you're really building a strong platform saying, if your cuts push us into recession, this government has to be gone. They have fucked up and they need to, take, they need to go to the country again. Um, and finally, uh, yeah, this thing of mobilising young people, students, but also maybe talking to the UK Youth Parliament, um, talking to, because they've got a campaign about the uh, rights into the student fees. Um, and one thing with young people is, it's actually not that helpful, I think, when you're trying to mobilise young people, to, to have it as a, to be putting the left thing as your front message. Because young people don't know what the left and right mean. We didn't grow up in a world where we had a left to look at. Uh, so yeah, base it on action. And also the fact that like, taking action and going out on the streets is transformative. <coughs> if you can get them to do something, then you'll get them to do something else after that. But the first thing is to be based upon an action. One, what they're planning to do in that good part to work campaign is to get a letter into the local press, into the local press about the importance of demonstrating on the 22nd, both locally and, and in central London. <coughs> and they're planning to get that signed by as many activists and trade union trade unionists and happy as we possibly can and get that into the local paper, you know, in the week before before the before the demonstration. <coughs> The, um, the, the other practical point is obviously what we do in the unions. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm the chair of a, of a local uh, NEJ branch. I have to say that my own union, which is not the biggest union of all, but nonetheless has been extraordinarily uh, good in terms of its backing for the Right to Work campaign. Uh, General Secretary Jeremy Deer and the President Peter Murray have both spoken on several Right to Work platforms, including the two national conferences that we that we held. <clears throat> and also we've, we've begun to hold um, local meetings with John Hendy, the lawyer, who's, who re who's represented several of the cases that have been uh, smashed down by the courts in terms of struggles. And the meeting that was held at Pitham House just recently was extraordinarily important. Altogether, quite not, it wasn't a very big meeting, unless it brought together about 40 or 50 quite good trade unionists who were able to have a proper, a really very, very good debate about the nature of the, of the trade union legislation as it stands now, how it's been, how it's been uh, changed, raising the question as whether or not we haven't in fact lost the right to strike and so on. So it was an extraordinarily very, very, very good, good debate. We're planning to take on, on, a, on, on, on a number of national meetings, which I certainly encourage everyone in this room to come along to. It's very, very important. So there are two practical, practical points. And finally, I suppose it's a third one, that again, in Hackney, we are planning to put on some sort of local activity, just the same as people in Brent, you know, in Islington, there are similar plans uh, coming out of the, um, of the same of the Whittington Hospital campaign. Um, so, or the same thing in the emergency uh, department and the Whittington Hospital campaign. So, I mean, I think it's also important to try and get to, because not everyone's going to be able to get down to central London. That's the, that's the case on, on, on the day. Can so, I think the point that people should be down the evening pack. But there's any possibility of putting on something at lunchtime or whatever in their local in their local in their localities, then absolutely get on get on down and do it. And I think that's the most important thing. Okay, thanks. Think. Thanks very much. Um, Jacob. 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 Um, yeah.
Yeah, I mean, I'm going to disagree with a couple of people who have spoken already. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's very much related to action. It's not directly it's practical action. It's practical, it's practical action. It's practical action related. Um, and um, so, so I mean, what was said by the board back there about action being transformative, that it leads to more action, I think, you know, coming out of like doing some organising with the Middlesex campaign, what's really strong there is that it allows people to think and, you know, the traditional form of, of the left-wing organisations is to theorise downwards and organise upwards, and I think it's a massive mistake. And I think one of the most positive things that's come out of the Middlesex campaign is, is sort of people bringing new theory, people theorising again. And, you know, I think some of the ways in which communities and grassroots organisations have discussed this sort of represent some kind of perverse instrumental, um, instrumentalisation of, of the idea of community, of the idea of a local struggle. Um, so I think it's really important that when we think about organising, we think about um, you know, opening up thinking spaces and spaces in which you know, theory can grow up from these movements rather than you know, all the theory going down. And that means that when you organise locally, you organise meetings, you organise discussions, and those don't mean discussions where you know, they're packed out by a faction. It means like proper discussions where you know, we're not having this lag of you know, the old-fashioned theory, which has always come down from the top of parties being injected into them, but rather be allowed to grow up. So I think that's really important for us. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll just... Um, with, I've got about five or six practical suggestion type people to speak, and then I think we'll kind of pull it to a close. What do you, what do you think? Are you taking the students from Middlesex? I'm taking the students from Middlesex if they've indicated. I have, are you, if you're their chaperone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm taking the student from Middlesex now. <laughs> and it's a woman, thank God. <laughs> There was, there was a um, Stop the War meeting in my town um, in St. August. And before then, I was kind of anti-Afghanistan, but I'd, I'd lose the arguments all the time because I didn't know stuff about it. But after that, you know, after that meeting, it was so easy to make the arguments because there were great speakers. I learned so much, I was able to replicate that in normal discussions with just everyone you know, around me. I think that's something that we can do as well. And I think, because it might be that the left's in a divided position or whatever, but the argument is actually really easy to make. I mean, one of the simple things, it, um, statistics I heard recently was, Britain's never gotten out of a recession in a time of public spending cuts, ever, right? That's a, such a simple argument you can put on, but that will stick in people's memories and they can use that later on. Because what we really need to confront here is the idea that we have to have spending cuts. That's what the problem is. And uh, I think potentially it's very easy to combat that. And I think also in terms of getting young people involved, I think you're right. I think going on about, oh, this is the left and you know, all this stuff does kind of put young people off. I think you'll find that young people are actually you know, very political, but they don't associate themselves with any sort of ideology or perspective. But I mean, you can, young people are interested in lots of um, you know, different specific things, as well as older people as well. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's From what age is that? <laughs> From all ages. Oh, no, My point kidding. is, yeah, every, everyone who might not be, you know, have a political direction in their minds or define themselves. I mean, the economy links to so many things. Cuts link to so many things. They link directly to climate change because we need to be start changing, you know, our energy source and stuff like that. It, it links directly to education. It links directly to the war. And, you know, nuclear disarmament. Why are we having these cuts when there's massive, you know, cut, um, savings we could be making in not fighting unwinnable wars? You know, so I think, 
those, kind of putting those arguments across and not just doing it on a, I think, you're right, I think doing it on a solely locally level is a, would be a massive mistake. And similarly, doing it on just a national level would be a mistake. I think, but I don't think it has to be separate. You can have plenty of movements in the past have been, you know, national movements, we can have national demonstrations with whoever wants to get involved, get as many people on the platform. I think, you know, I think it's significant that Tony Benn said that it was one of the, you know, at the meeting, was that it was one of the best um, evenings of political education we've had for a long time. And I think, you know, that's what, that's mainly what it's about. It's, and I think if you, you know, if you put those arguments, you'll be able to move, mobilise people in the future. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Now, I'm full of bad before coming to this meeting, so I'm just you know, putting it in the meeting here for people to think seriously about, and maybe we do think about having an after-work demonstration. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the demo we had against Bush in the evening was very successful. Mm -hmm. I, I feel more confident about bringing people out with me if we're out to say, we start the rally at 4 o'clock and we have a demonstration after, so people should discuss it in the okay. comrade negotiations which happen <laughs> well, well, I mean, the, there, is, there is something to be said just briefly about the Bush demonstration. Is, is that when Bush did come here, it wasn't in the evening. It was during, it was all during day. the day. All day. It was yeah. all the day during the day. It was the largest demonstration that there's ever been on a weekday. Several hundred thousand people. You know, I mean, and so it's, it's what moves people. I tell you. And the day People that will leave work if they feel it strongly yeah, yeah. enough. And the okay. day that I'll, I'll take uh, Michael now, yeah. and then... Two practical things, just one thing on what, what Tom said. So the reason why the flyers are knocking around, say, from 2 o'clock, is the plan is for it to go on from 2 o'clock before, before it makes his speech and stuff until after. Right. So there'll be loads of people in central London, there's already PCS members, RMT people, use and people, use you people, the rest of it, already paying to keep down and stuff. But the second thing I want to look at this week's title to talk about is the local stuff. Because of course the stuff nationally is important, the stuff on TV and the rest of the stuff about it. If we're serious about this shit, really, Stuff. Actually, for example, the Witten Hospital campaign, we'll have a progress in the day. And it seems to me under the basis and stuff, the Witten Hospital campaign and other campaigns in Eastern are leading them to progress. So we can do it where they're now talking about the right stuff, put your hands around the town and all the mixing cups. But on the rest of the stuff, these are vital. And there'll be an interplay between the idea of stuff of, of, of national progress or London wide progress. But some of those are very, very important. Witten is probably the, the main campaign in London to pull together these kind of social causes and one of victory. Uh, and I think it's very important that there isn't a kind of opposition to the idea that it is down the street and that's the only way because the down the street part gets on the TV. That's true, it gets on TV. But the other part is and stuff is what the legacy is afterwards as well. Like, and stuff. You have to not have a position where down the street sees one Okay, okay, James, me Yeah, well, but you know, Henry said, and uh, as well, which is, which is, I think, anytime this is practical, I'll get there. They on the biggest single thing, the, the biggest kind of problem we face, the biggest political issue we face, that if the question that we solve it, suddenly everything else kind of unlocks, it's going to be easier, it's precisely this issue of the cuts are necessary. And this is sort of overwhelming consensus that has developed in the last two years. Every single major political party is now signed up to this, and it's all you hear from every single leader out there. Now, what we have to do really is part of building a campaign, and the only way we will build a campaign is start to get an argument out there that this is not necessary. And that does mean, I think, the idea of producing leaflets that sort of goes through some of the arguments. I remember when we had, you know, we produced Scott the War leaflets and stuff, we go through some of the arguments about why you don't have to fight a war to get rid of Saddam Hussein or whatever it was. You actually go through some of these things. We should start to look into doing that because it's not enough. Just to say, we don't like your cuts, it's not fair. Everyone would agree it's not particularly fair, or well, most people would agree they're not out like Tories or Arsenal or other sorts. <laughs> but they would agree that it's not fair, they'll just say you can't do anything about it, you have to pay this. We have to stand turn around and say, you don't have to pay it, Argentina didn't pay back its debts and they you know, recovered massively as a result, the economy recovered massively as a result. Of <coughs> um, you can go through, we can tax the rich and go through some of the details of um, pension funds, you know, actually trying to pull super cuts on their own pensioners and this sort of thing. That's the kind of stuff we need to get out. That's the sort of thing that starts to build an organisation because then people have the confidence to carry those arguments everywhere. So you move out of just the big propaganda that it's about and into these are the details about how we're going to do something about it. So the practical suggestion is yes, I think we should get some leaflets, the backside of the leaflet done by point one point, what you need to know about the cuts. Second, I think the idea of a tour that goes around the country where people can get the conference, see the speakers, local campaigners, alongside national figures, <coughs> is an excellent one. And thirdly, it's actually probably need to get a website of some sort set up where people can download materials, get information from it, all that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. Sorry, I don't know your name. No, my, my name is Jeremy Cullen, not part of any organisation. Oh. Oh. Uh, came along to the meeting. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you're talking about practical suggestions, you, and yet everyone's sort of saying you've got to go from Trafalgar Square to Parliament Square. Surely this whole thing has come about because of the banking failure. Isn't that the area we should be uh, going in large numbers? I, I think, just to say, Jeremy, we, when, when there was the banking crisis, the credit crunch, we did repeatedly go well, down to the city. No, no, I understand that, but this is the day of the budget. They're going to be announcing the cuts, and I think you have to be outside Parliament where Cameron is making that argument. What is this? Another day for the banks. Yeah, but, but yeah, I don't want to don't want to shoot that down. Just, 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 Get a run on all these banks. Get them to collapse. Okay, sort of. okay. That's, that's, <laughs> that's 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 hang on. That's that's twenty second. No, no. That's the question. The question of an alternative program is one. You see, I just want to say this very briefly. One of the things we haven't discussed here, and we haven't had centrally to, is, is the European question, is the international question. Yeah. And they are in Greece at this moment having in their neighbourhood committees exactly these kinds of discussions. If we've got to have this level of cuts, how will we live? You know, so I mean, I think it's something, this is a, a, an important question and it's a question we're going to have to, we're going to have to come back to. Uh, I've got Noel, I've got Seth and Guy at the back, Claire, we call it a day. And, and, and we'll take a little bit from Greece to finish. Okay. okay. Um, very, very briefly. Very briefly. Um, I think there's a risk of people getting too depressed about the state of things. Now, you know, in 2004, we had 24,000 people <coughs> here in the European Social Forum, which actually, when we talk about unity and diversity, that was a brilliant example of that. Never in Britain before have we brought together, however important the organising process was, precisely because we brought together so many people. We brought together the biggest group of groups. You know, it was what the kind of thing we need to do now. We've done it before. You know, so it's not beyond the the the, the ken of the British left and the wider sort of situation to do this sort of thing. Um, and so that's why I think university unity diversity is massively important because it isn't just about work and labour. There's all sorts of aspects of things that are going to be you know affected with the environment, human background. So my practical suggestion, as we've got clear. You know, in a position um, as the president elect, and we've got the Middlesex students here, and we've got massive cuts in education. I work in education, everyone I work with is worried about what's going to happen. You know, um, I would suggest, I mean, I realize that a lot of students might be going home at this point, but that we get around London colleges, and one of the things we, I remember we did um, on the day the war started, we had all these marches, um, and we may not get on the same scale, but we had, for instance, 900 people go from UCL doing an illegal march, marching through the streets of London. You know, the police obviously didn't know we were going to do it. We kind of walked, stormed through the British Museum, went through the, the reading library of the British Museum, <laughs> the stewards were going mental, shouting, war slogans, whatever. We need to do a bit of that. It's not just yeah. about rallies yeah. and, like, you know, kind of polite stuff. We actually need to cause a stink. And, you know, I would say get students coming from every college in London that we can get people out from, yeah, feed into a march. That, that is essentially a march that goes through the streets without permission. We have Middlesex students at the front. And why don't we have massive effigies of Marx? Nietzsche, <laughs> saying philosophers against the cuts. That's a great idea, Noel, and I delegate all of that to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I should mention that on the 21st, there is the UCU and the NUS to have a day of action on that day as well. Seth? Yeah, I, I feel slightly anxious that Noel has stolen my wacky idea. <laughs> Speakers really don't grab the public's imagination. And I don't know if people are aware, but on the 22nd, 
Greece are playing Argentina. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can play around the side of that. People have sort of said what I want to say. Mate. First of all, let me just apologise for this. I am going to a big party tonight. It's not just for me. I thought you'd dress up. That's your uniform. It's important. Um, I mean, I think it's inevitable that we're going to have, you know, political discussions and debates. And this is the first sort of activist meeting that's come out of the the big one that we did last week. But I'd like to to make the suggestion um, for other activist meetings that we could try out different formats in order to be able to generate ideas and actually be able to put them into to uh, into action, I suppose. I mean, I'm involved in a, an event thing called Mutiny where we try a different way of facilitating the meetings and the amount of stuff that we get through in a, you know, in a couple of hours is actually quite um, phenomenal. So even though we've had this one like this this time, I would like to suggest for other activist meetings to play around with different formats. The other thing with um, the websites and um, Twitters and all that sort of thing, it does mean that people are going to need to actually do it. Um, I mean, one of the great things about websites and, and blogs and things is that uh, lots of people are able to, to, to contribute to them, um, are able to um, pull in different <coughs> blogs in order to, to show the variety of opinions, a thousand flowers, and beyond the left, and all these different issues that we're talking about here. So we can pull them all in together. Um, and um, what do I say? Websites? Um, Twitter actually doing stuff. Oh, and also um, the things like the leaflet, you know, wording is going to have to be decided and we have to work out a mechanism that at least everybody in this room, if not wider and beyond, can come to a, a way of um, agreeing on wording. Again, one of the great strengths about Bre uh, Brendan, well, it was about Brendan actually, about Mutiny, is that um, Brendan <laughs> came up with some really fantastic wording that was, you know, ma managed to avoid a lot of the usual sort of uh, wording that's used on the left, and I think this is something if we're going to be trying to uh, engage, you know, teenagers, people that have been involved in whatever before, we need to play around with different images, styles, language, and all sorts of things to make it really exciting. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, that's a suggestion. I think, I think that all the main parties, you know, in this country, in the three main parties, are united, okay? And they're going to keep in the in publicity this issue of cuts by doing it. And uh, by declaring you know, the war against, uh, against society, not only the working classes. Uh, and on the other, you know, from the other side, I think we need to have a very recognizable uh, slogan that it can go through at least this next period, you know, the next kind of some months, let's say. In order, this I think it would be a very good uh, thing to amalgamate everyone who has a kind of uh, works in, uh, who works in any level and uh, have, uh, having a common reference point, despite you know the, the different struggles that uh, they carry on. And I think part of, in my opinion, part of the success of the Stop the War coalition was that it was very clear and direct. Stop the war. <laughs> Along that lines, I think we, we need to find something, you know, very, very brief that can put it in a kind of a more general way, but very precise. And there, you know, I don't know who can fit. I think still it's very, very big anger of the people uh, against the bankers and who is going to pay. They don't take that it is their own crisis. It's the big crisis. It's the system crisis. Okay. I just want to say a couple of things in winding up the meeting. I want to apologize to anyone that hasn't spoken. I know that um, some people had their hands up, but then withdrew them when the practical thing kind of went. But anyway, I no doubt we'll have we'll have um, we'll have have other other meetings. I want to make a suggestion that Claire will will kind of write this, these suggestions up and they will be circulated by email. Photograph will be circulated by email. I particularly like Noel's suggestion. Um, I I just um, Henry can you because I want to see Michael. I just want to say, say this to the comrades from the Right to Work campaign, that I, don't, I, I feel that we have to find a way of working together. I know the Right to Work campaign has been doing this work for a year, but what I think we should propose as a meeting is that on the 22nd, we, I've already been to see the police, I've got this agreement for a march to go from Trafalgar Square to Parliament, which is something which is unusual. They don't usually give us that, and they don't usually give us that on the day of a budget. I think we should use it. 
I think we should fit in with the timing of the right to work campaign protest. We should begin our rally at one o'clock and march down to, 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 to Parliament and hopefully march down in a united way. And I think that is, I think we're, whatever comrades feel, we are at the very early stages of this campaign, albeit that the credit crunch started in 2008. We haven't yet found the mechanism for producing the mass campaign that we need to turn the tide on this question. And we will have to be very creative in the way that we work and we will have to have very serious political discussions and we will have serious political disagreements. But I think we must remain united and unity is the central question for us now. So I'd like to thank every comrade who's spoken. It's been a good meeting again, extremely hot in this room. And um, thank you.